Hi, um, this is a message to all the Deros in Perth, because I've never left Perth, you know, presumably there's a lot more of you fuckers out there stretching across all of Australia, perhaps even the world, but from what I've noticed in Perth, there seems a, a very particular breed of uh, Dero, you know, the kind that looks like they were bred from incest, or directly from some convict half caste mm -hmm. kind of mix. Uh, no offence to Aborigines, but generally I am referring to the half-caste convict, uh, big forehead, fucking sunken, absent eyes, and fucking jaws that kind of stick out. I don't know, man. They look like animals, um, and like mutated kind of, like, ancestral. Really, really stupid. Every second word is like a cunt or a fucking, or whatever. And, um, their basic way of developing rapport with their friends, even, and their family is by giving each other shit and shouting at each other and swearing and, you know, and just causing a scene in public. Like, this one girl I saw in a train come on and she's just like, Ah, oh, fucking, blah, 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 running up and down the fucking car carriages of this, this train, um, yelling obscenities and starting on a mate, saying, Oh, that fucking bitch, oh, and going up to another one of her girlfriends and, Oh, that slut, oh, and just bad mouthing all of the different friends that she was walking up to, um, to each other. And it was just like, what the fuck, man? This is how these people have developed rapport with each other, is, is via abuse, not via respect, uh, via, you know, some kind of progressive, progressive discussion of some sort. Uh, no, it's, it's completely regressive behavior, completely animalistic, not even animalistic, it is, and compelled animalistically, it's malicious, it's sadistic, it's territorial, it's just anger manifesting, um, but not at all intellectually. Um, well, kind of intellectually, but it's not intelligent, if you know what I mean. It, uh, basically, you know, I, I work in Midland, I catch a train from, you know, Bayswater to Midland every day. Uh, and I, I, I see, you know, there's people on their phones talking out loud about fucking dicks and cunts and all sorts of fucking the nasty details, and faggots and shit, whatever. Um, just the language, very coarse, and no fucking, no etiquette at all, no fucking decent manner, no decent way of conveying, um, you know, expression, meaning, and it's, it's, it's filthy, it's disgusting, it's, it's pathetic, that they're, they're, it's disgraceful, there's no respect anymore with these people, and there's so many of them, um, even older people, even people that are less obvious, you know, and I'm not talking about, you don't have to be half caste or bred from some convict mix, um, the sophisticated darers, older darers that cover it well, but they still got the selfish, uneducated, unrefined mentality about them. And the biggest way that they can relate to people is by one upping them, um, and and belittling them, them, undermining them, abusing them, insulting them, um, just basically being a negative piece of shit to uh, everyone they meet in society, um, without any care, without any big picture thinking or respect. It's all purely selfish and inward. And, and vain, and, and it's like futility to them, mastering the art of futility is like a feat, like that would make them feel fulfilled, that they have reached an apex of an abyss, kind of, if, that, if you can even do that, I don't think that makes sense, but it's like this is what they are trying to achieve, and then you, you see the general younger generations and teenagers, 20 year olds going to clubs, and it's the same mentality, violence, is, 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 is like a general demonstration of manlyhood and being a man and being the alpha male or some shit like that. You know, all these things on the news of people getting king hit and dying or just king hit and falling into a coma or being retarded or just being king hit and thinking, oh, that wasn't very nice. Whatever. It's not nice overall. What happens to you, the point isn't the extreme degrees and that, that, that all these acts vary between. It's the principle of where all these acts are coming from. There's general taste, like an addiction, like, like, you know, uh, being, yeah, like an addiction to violence and seeking to get the hit, you know, getting bored and going out in town just to start fights with people and just, for no reason, there's people, you know, they have families, mothers, uh, fucking lives, you know, 20 year old gets knocked down and killed, that's 20 years of life, that's, that's 20 years worth of moments. That's like millions and millions and millions of days worth of moments. All ending because one douchebag out there feels so fucking wildly inadequate and d purposeless and uh, hateful. Or just... I have no clue, but he's got this demented idea of something to prove to the world 
or maybe it's just that these people they experience such pain and such such a feeling of being so lame, like super duper lame, that they have to hurt other people and reduce them, undermine them, bring them down to their level, so that in a way it distracts them of their own pain, because now other people are feeling pain, other people are at a loss, this other person is dead, and that makes them feel better about the fact that they feel dead inside. I don't know, maybe it's through television, we're bred with UFC now, um, mixed martial arts, where we're being bred to and conditioned to um, find through various forms and films and whatnot, in police, cops, um, violence to be attractive, violence to be a sign of justice as well as transgression and evil and a vice. Um, depending on the context, justice can be seen as something you're worth rewarding with a medal or something you get done for for being a terrorist and it's a, it's a completely different uh, kind of reaction we give to that, a connotation to that. It's not good, it's immoral, it's bad. Um, you're either, you know, unless you're a freedom fighter, which is the other side of the fence, you're just a terrorist. And the, the point is that we're proliferating all these images of violence and we're, we're providing context where it is justifiable. So it's kind of like the thing with boat people, you know, I always talk about boat people and these kind of terms being used over and over, these references repeatedly, consistently ingrained and hammered into us like fucking Woody Woodpecker fucking media styles to the point where we just start having this thing, boat people, boat people. We don't see these people as human beings that have problems where they come from and they're trying to escape that and share this space on Earth with everyone because who the fuck really owns it and they need to go somewhere in their space or whatever. But they're seen as boat people. Uh, as a cat, and, you know, and Basically, the, the, the government allows us to justify, to an extent, being prejudiced and using such generalizations, gross generalizations, labels, um, you know, and talking about all these different people coming here from England and whatnot, not appreciating our culture, um, different religions. So it's like we're saying, okay, you can be judgmental, you can be prejudiced um, to various religions, uh, various types of peoples and whatever, um, people in different situations trying to change our situations or coming here and influencing our situation. You, we can justify labeling these people and looking down on them as being less worthy. Um, so we're, we're pretty much preaching in principle bigotry and bias, prejudice, discrimination. Um, so people take that. People take that. Stupid people. And people aren't bred to be, you know, critical thinkers these days and aware seekers of knowledge and the, the, the awareness within the knowledge. Because knowledge itself is redundant. It brings one back. It brings one... It's regressive, I mean. It brings one's back if, if all you have is knowledge. Unless you can spawn from that knowledge, um, wisdom and awareness, which is open-ended. Knowledge is closed. It's like it's like a container with water that develops the pictures, like magic solution, that develops the pictures of awareness. You need that structure, that container of knowledge and that context in order to, you know, evaluate something and then figure out the greater meaning and how you can actually relate it to your reality and use that information. And that's where the wisdom comes in. Knowledge in itself is, is limited. But anyway, my point is that we're, we're preaching all this shit and people that aren't raised to be critical thinkers and it's just all about knowledge, just about the in info they hear. It's like we have jingle channels in our head, you know, you have jingles. It can be a jingle in the form of a movie sequence or images and visual or it can be music, you know, lyrics that play throughout your head from time to time. They call it the jingle channel. There's always something playing depending on your mood and what's happening, and, and it's just below conscious level. Um, the knowledge, everything from the news, from the, the TV shows, from the movies, from the magazines, um, general conversation, it, it, it adds to this jingle channel, and it develops like a baseline of just subconscious thought from which we develop our own ideas from, and our focus and perception. It fully affects our perception of things and helps paint the, the details of, of things and how we see it. So, basically, people don't have the wisdom to guide everything they're seeing. They don't have the, the wisdom and the ability to just patiently con contemplate something and really absorb the deeper and greater meaning in something. Everything's about pace. That's why I'm talking so fast. Because you're probably thinking this is taking too long. I'm going to watch something else on YouTube. Or go on Facebook. Or watch a movie, get a laugh somewhere, get a kick, some stimulus, constant pace and stimulus. That's all it's about. 
We don't take the time anymore to really think things through. So we retain a lot of knowledge, but we don't really understand much. We understand less about the world as we know more about how it works and how to do things and various aspects of it, things about it. But we don't understand the meaning connecting things. And we don't have as much sentiment anymore, much respect, care, love, compassion. Um, and this is why we see people on the jingle channels, there's violence. There's pushing people down when they've wronged you and justice needs to be upheld. So people don't think, well, the law decides what's justice and what's morally acceptable and anything outside the law is just unacceptable and morally I cannot do it. People, when they are in the heat of the moment, they just fall into this, this image in their head, the jingle channel, that violence is permissible if it's righteous and people can justify in all sorts of crazy ways to themselves how certain acts that they wish to perform uh, will be justifiably justified, right? Justifiable. Um, so they'll do whatever, because there are people in the world, a government, officials, uh, armies, whatever, uh, that commit atrocities, and it's justifiable. Um, and in principle, if you can justify murder at all, then you can justify all murder. Otherwise, all murder should not be justifiable, and all murder should be condemned. It's all or nothing, really. In principle, it's, it's like saying... You know, you can't rape someone and beat someone up totally and absolutely rape the fucking shit out of someone. That's rude. But, you know, you can you can have sex with somebody if it's, I don't know, if it's in their sleep or if you do it really lightly, you know. Uh, if you tie them, not with rope that, that gives them chafing, but velvet. Make sure it's a comfortable arrangement for them to be tightly secured, but it's not hurting them. And be tender while you rape them. At the end of the day, it's fucking rape. It's fucked either way. Just like it is if it's murder. It's fucked either way, and there's no justifying it. And if there is, then people would justify using, doing the same thing in all sorts of contexts. Whatever they feel to them subjectively, deludedly, uh, makes sense and is right. So that's the thing, we're preaching all this fucked up shit um, through constant proliferation. And, uh... And, it, and we wonder why, you know, in a, in a society of monkey see, monkey do, with mirror neurons that impel us, compel us to act out what we see others doing, to speak um, in reflection and echo of other people. We echo each what we perceive in each other. Um, and we wonder why we have all this violence bouncing between all the mirrors and all these crazy fucking ways of behaving, all these crazy attitudes... And then you come home and you watch TV, and this is the shit that we use to entertain us, as well as desensitize us. The news with its constant bombardment of negative bullshit, just so that when you see and hear about or experience firsthand negative shit in the world, you think, well, that happens all over the world, that's, that's normal now, that's to be expected. It's still fucked. It's fucked that any of this shit ever happens, let alone daily, and we hear about it daily, but the fact that it's constantly bombarding us it, it desensitizes us into this whole, well, that's just the way it is. And we accept it because it seems so predominant, like it can't be changed. Look how much fucking violence there is and, and parents killing their own babies and rape and theft and all this shit and vandalism and hooligans and king knockouts. So people start thinking, oh, violent inclined, violently inclined people, well, everyone's doing it anyway. The world's going to shit. I feel this way. It won't be so bad if I do it anymore. What if I never showed this shit on the news? What if they never talked about fucking people king hitting each other and glorifying these guys by putting them on television in the first place, get letting their names be known or their, their type be distinguished in such a fucking deep light and a heavy light that may make them feel significant, even if it's in a negative way? What if I never showed this shit? Maybe then they'll think, oh, why do I want to do this when I just get locked up? But I'm not part of a greater movement. I'm not going to wind up on the news. And, you know, this, is not, this isn't a popular trend. Now it is a popular trend. There's this whole idea in people's head and their jingles of King hitting people on the street. The general person that wouldn't do this thing anyway because they fucking have respect for people and they aren't sadistic, they wouldn't do it anyway. And those that are inclined, constantly seeing this shit, thinking, oh, did you see that fucking guy knock him out? That was awesome. They show this shit on the TV, man. Violence. See that shit on the news, man? That was fucking sick. And then they go out there and they're fucking turned on and revved up and egged on by the news to do this shit themselves. Reminded, mirror neuron style, monkey see, and they fucking do it. It's fucked, man. And, and, oh, man. 
And this, uh, basically, this is just a little vent for me. I'm really over the Deros. I'm over those that are so fucking selfish or just ignorant and so retarded in the fucking head that they can't r understand that, you know, pain hurts. Being hit hurts. Uh, this shit affects families and lives made up of many, many moments that f is unique to every person. It's never happened before, existed before, and will never exist again. And these people take this away. These people damage or, or limit, shorten these people's lives. Fucking fuck them up beyond repair. And, and put a dent in their day, at least. And for what? So you can feel like a man? You think that makes you a fucking man? You're weak. All of you that fucking thinks violence is a turn on and is awesome and a sign of, of you know, king fucking lion of the jungle bullshit and fucking alpha male bullshit, it's weakness. Anyone can act like an animal. Anyone can cave into that frustration and anger which boils within us all and is developed through this constant array of shit that we have to do through life. Everyone has that fucking streak of anger. But to focus on it and allow it to become your main pulse, your main motivation, your main driving fucking principle, that hatred, that rage, usually self-loathing, self-guilt is the cause of these things. And that is lame. That is weak. That is lame. You're not strong because you can, like an animal, make a hard fist and use your arm and your muscles to push it into someone's face as hard as you can when they're unsuspecting. That doesn't make you an a, a fucking smart person, an accomplished person, even a powerful person. Anyone can do this. A child can push someone onto the train tracks. Does that make the child a fucking champion? When someone's waiting for the train and push, <laughs> I'm a man, I took his life. You're a fucking idiot. And if you want to fucking take it out because you need therapy or something, yeah, hit a pillow. Take fucking karate classes or some shit like this. Do some exercise. Be productive with your fucking energy. We all have dark energy, but the idea is you use the dark energy productively. You don't use it for dark ends and on other people to hurt them. How the fuck would you like it, you cunts? Seriously. You shit me. You're not strong. You're fucking weak. And what real strength is, is even when you've been through shit in life and you have suffered abuse that has turned you into the monster that you are, that you can still get up with somewhat of a halo intact. And I don't mean being a fucking angel or a saint. I mean just having principles. I mean just having a little bit of altruism left in your heart. Giving a shit for people and not being so self-absorbed and lost in your own tortured fucking existence to the point where you don't even have to think about it, let alone feel conscientious, have a conscience, and care about how you are affecting other people. Uh, what takes real strength is when you go through that shit, still caring, still not taking it out on the people, and physically, there's nothing impressive about it. Anyone can do it. It doesn't make you special. It makes you pathetic. And if you're going to hurt anyone, or take anyone out of existence, kill someone, Kill yourself! Because seriously, the world is full of so much darkness and you use that darkness to justify your own dark actions. But if you, if all these dark motherfuckers, these haters, these shitters, these asshole pricks out there that give nothing back to the world and take and take and take and just shit on everyone else, if they just fucking shat on themselves or just accept that they are shit. Their life is shit. So they just push the flush button and flush themselves out of existence. Then the world might be a nicer place and smell a little bit better. And not be so fucking stinky. Yeah? So Daros, or you angry motherfuckers that are looking to pick up fights with everyone. Why don't you try to be a real man and find some real courage. Not just physically move out of a feeling of inadequacy and fear and loathing, but try to emotionally move yourself from a place of courage and fortitude, determination. Failure cannot cope with persistence, but if you just think that by physically dominating other people that is making you succeed, you have failed beyond saving, and I hope you fucking die, because we do not need people like you in existence. Thanks. Cunts.